Hey there gang and welcome to this series where I'm going to show you how to use Nuxt router middleware from scratch. Okay then, so in this short series we're going to take a look at how router middleware works in Nuxt applications and work through a few different examples of how you can use it. We're going to be looking at inline middleware, named middleware, global middleware and also middleware chaining. But first of all, what exactly is router middleware in the context of a Nuxt application? Well, when it comes to Nuxt applications, route middleware just refers to some code that runs between exiting one route and entering a new one. So say for example, we're on the home page and we click a link to navigate to the about page. Well, then we could run some middleware in the middle of exiting that home page and then entering the about route. And that middleware would just be a function which we can define. So within that function, we could run any kind of logic that we want, including accessing cookies, redirecting users based on certain conditions, or even showing errors to the user if something's not right. For example, we might have a site whereby users can log in, and we could have certain pages where users need to be authenticated to view them. Well, then we could run some middleware before entering those pages to check if a user is authenticated. If they are, great, they can pass through and see that new page. If not, well, then we could redirect them to a login page. So these router middleware functions can be really useful when you're creating Nuxt applications because they give us a really useful way to run custom logic between users navigating between pages. Also, Nuxt router middleware is primarily run in the browser because generally speaking in Nuxt applications, most of the routing happens on the front end and not on the server. However, on initial requests, if you're using server-side rendering, then the middleware can run on the server as well. So then for this series, we'll be exploring how router middleware in Nuxt works to implement some route guards for a dummy website like this. So we'll be imitating a user logging into the application by storing a user cookie when they submit the login form. And then in the middleware between routes, we'll be checking that user cookie to determine whether a user can view a certain page or not. And when they're not authenticated or when we log out, we can redirect that user back to the login page. And to do this, we'll be using middleware in a variety of different ways to give you a bit of practice in all the methods available to us. Now, before you start the rest of this series, I do want to mention that I will assume you already have a basic understanding of how Nuxt works. So this should not be your first foray into Nuxt and you should be familiar with how to make a simple Nuxt application with multiple different pages. If you're not, then definitely check out the Nuxt crash course, first of all, to get you up to speed and then come back here. Right then. So I've also made course files for each lesson in this series and you can find all of those on this GitHub repo right here. And I will leave a link to this page down below this video. So each lesson has its own branch. And if you wanna download the code for a specific lesson, make sure you select that lesson first of all from the branch drop down right here. Then you can hit the code button to download a zip folder of that lesson code. I've also made a starter project and I've added it to this repo and that's got its own branch as well. So go ahead and select that. And then you can download a zip folder of this to your computer. Once you've done that, just unzip this starter project and open it up in a text editor. All right, so I unzipped that folder and opened it up in VS Code. And you can see I've also renamed the project to Nux Middleware just because it was a long ass folder name otherwise. And the first thing I'd like to do is install all the dependencies as listed in the package.json file for the starter project. So to do that, open up a terminal and you wanna make sure you're in the root directory and type npm install and then hit enter. Oops, I've not done that, npm install and then hit enter. All right, so before we crack on with using any middleware, I just wanna give you a quick tour of this really simple starter project. And I've made this starter project by the way so that I can keep the focus squarely on middleware for the rest of this series. But anyway, we just have the app.view file, which is the root component that wraps everything else. And inside this, we tell Nuxt to show the default layout and have that wrap every page component. So the default layout file is inside the layouts folder, this one right here called default.view. And this contains a header for the template with a nav inside it. Inside the nav, we've got a site title and four Nuxt links to different pages. And remember, we use Nuxt links instead of anchor tags to use front end routing in the browser. Anyway, below the header, we've got a main tag which wraps the slot where the page content gets rendered. We've also got some very basic styling at the bottom down here as well. 
Now, all the page components are inside the pages folder, which is where Nuxt expects them to be. Um, we've got four pages in total. We have an admin page, an index home page, a login page, and a logout page. These are all the pages we're linking to from the layout file and the URLs match those file names. So if we take a quick look at the admin page, we can see it's a really simple page with a tiny bit of content inside it. The same is true for the index page as well. Don't worry too much about this user cookie thing at the moment. I'll explain that shortly. The login page has a form inside it where we can enter a username and we can log in. That username is being tracked and stored by a ref in the script tag. And when we submit the form, we're going to fire this login function. Now notice also we use this use cookie composable right here to say we want to use a user cookie. And by doing this, Nuxt looks for a cookie in the browser called use it. It gets it, it deserializes it, and it stores it in this constant right here. Then we can update the cookie value by using the value property on this constant and then Nuxt serializes that and it saves it for us again in the browser. If the cookie doesn't already exist, then Nuxt will create it for us. Anyway, inside the login function, we set the value of that cookie to be an object with the username value that they submitted and entered into the form and also a role which is set to be user to begin with. So this cookie then gets stored in the browser and then we navigate the user to the index page. And remember inside that page, we use the user cookie again and we output the username property of that user on the cookie if it exists. Finally, we've got the logout page, which at the moment is a pretty empty page, but we'll be using some route middleware in here later on to log a user out. So then, now let's try viewing this project in a browser, which we can do by coming to the terminal and typing npm run dev in the root directory and then hitting enter. Okay, so that should spin up a local dev server so that we can view the app on localhost port 3000 and we can see it right here in all its glory. So we can flick between the pages and notice when we go to the home page, we're not outputting a username yet because that user cookie doesn't exist because we've not logged in. But if we go to the login page and enter like Mario for the username, and then the password can be anything, we don't check the password. But if we then submit the form, it creates the user cookie for us and navigates us back to that home page again. And this time, because we have that user cookie now, we're logged in, we see the username. Awesome. Now, if we go to the logout page, we see that page, but we don't actually log out, so to speak. The cookie still remains in the browser. But later, like I said, we're going to add some middleware in this route to delete that cookie when we navigate to the logout page. And that's essentially then going to log us out, right? Also, you can view the cookie by opening up the dev tools. And once you've done that, you wanna to go to the application tab. Now, when you're inside that, go to cookies and you wanna choose local host and you should see the cookie right here. If you don't, you might need to refresh this panel. And by the way, for those wondering, we're not actually implementing any kind of real authentication here. This is just a dummy app, which uses a user cookie to kind of simulate a user either being logged in or out of the website. When the cookie is present, it's mimicking a logged in state. And when the cookie is deleted, it's mimicking that logged out state. And then we can use that information to run custom logic in some middleware later on. Anyway, that's the starter project up and running. And in the next lesson, we'll get to work making our first middleware function. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up, and I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.